Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you have been here before. My name is Nicole and I like to do fashion DIYs. I know it's been a minute since I have posted a video, but now that the weather is finally getting colder here in Toronto, I think that I have no more excuses other than to buckle down and actually start producing some content. So that is what this is. So today I am taking inspiration from the brand URMI. Am I? No, that's not it. What is it? Hold on. Yeah, URMI. Okay, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so I originally saw this top on Kendall Jenner and I thought it would be pretty easy to recreate. Probably not the most weather appropriate since it's backless and short sleeved, but you could also definitely do this with a long sleeve top. The one I picked up is a short sleeve, just not as short as this one. It's honestly so crazy to me how this top retails for $105 when it's only half a sweater, but that is why I am making my own. So the top that I'm going to be recreating is this mock neck tee that is from actually from Uniqlo and this was $8.50 which is a lot more than I would typically spend at Valley Village. So I was looking for something specific and this kind of hit everything. Um, I like the mock neck, it has its sleeves and it's a knit. It's also a medium so I have a little bit of room to work with with the fabric if I need it. So yeah, I'm going to try this on and see what we're working with. Okay, this is what we are working with. Um, it's actually not too bad for being a medium. It fits kind of nicely on the shoulders. Um, obviously it's very long, but I'm going to be cropping it, so it doesn't matter. The only thing that's a little wonky about the fit that I'm going to be adjusting is just there's a lot of extra fabric right in the armpits and then it gets kind of like bunchy and with the stripes it's just very noticeable so I will be taking this in a little bit inside here and I'm not really going to be touching the front it's more going to be everything in the back so I kind of want to make sure this fits properly. So the easiest way for me to figure out if the fit was right was if I turned the top inside out and put it back on to mark how much I needed to remove from the underarms. To do that, I just pinched the excess fabric and used some chalk to mark the place. Okay, so where I have the two chalk marks, I am going to pin and draw out where I want to sew. Be sure to switch to a ballpoint needle when working with knits for best results. And once I sewed my new side seams, I just ran it through my serger for a cleaner finish. So I've taken in the sides and I think the way it fits through here is better. So the next step is to figure out where I would like to crop it. To do that, I just folded it up where I would like my new hemline to be and pinned it using a safety pin. Then marked the wrong side of the fabric with my chalk and added an inch for seam allowance. To cut, I matched up the side seams to ensure the top was laying flat and measured out how much I needed to take off the bottom and marked with chalk before using fabric scissors to cut. Then I tried it on again and very awkwardly marked how high I wanted the back to be. To create the cutout, I cut out a piece of tracing paper to draw out my pattern. Then I drew out the rough shape I wanted the back to be. The top I'm replicating cuts over the side seams, so I folded the paper to extend past the side seams and continued drawing out my pattern. I only drew the pattern on one side because I just folded it in half so both sides were the same. Then I took my ruler and S-curve to clean up the lines and added one inch seam allowance before cutting. After a few adjustments, I pinned the shirt with the side seams together to find the center back and lined my piece up before pinning and cutting it out. 
Before I move on to the next step, I just ran my serger along all the raw edges before moving on to the hem. Then I just did a simple half inch single folded hem and sewed it with a straight stitch at the bottom. Then with the remaining raw edge, I'm going to create a one inch hem that is also going to act as a tunnel for our draw cord. So I just pinned it in place before sewing. Once everything was sewn, I pressed flat. Moving on to the cord, I measured out how long I thought I needed it to be and decided on 60 inches, but I ended up trimming them down quite a bit. And this whole process would have been a lot easier if the loop I was working with was shorter, so I recommend finalizing your measurements beforehand. Using the remaining fabric I cut off, I cut two two inch strips and sewed them together to make one long strip. But before I started sewing, I realized it was a little too wide, so I trimmed it down before serging right sides together. To turn this loop right side out, I went in with this rope method since it was too long to fit in my loop turner. To do this, I needed a spool of rope or ribbon and a safety pin. Then I tied the end of the rope onto the safety pin and started to feed it through the loop. Once I eventually made it to the other end, I then pinned the safety pin to the inside of the loop and fed it back through, turning it right side out as it went. I'm not going to lie, this did take some time and I did lose the safety pins a few times, so patience was key. But once I was done, the last step was to feed the cord through the tunnel of the top and tie off the loose ends with a simple knot and I was done. And this is how the final top turned out. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Honestly, it turned out way better than I was expecting. I think the top is super cute and I will definitely get a lot of wear out of it. And I'll probably make a couple more variations. Something maybe with full length sleeves for the winter. So if you want to see more fashion DIY content, then please be sure to like and subscribe so I know that you guys are watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.